I'm Haley from Gallifrey Public Radio, a Doctor Who fandom podcast and part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Stand by for a brand new episode of All Things Good and Nerdy. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 406 of the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. This is recorded live on Sunday, June 14th, 2020. I am Chris, and joining me like normal are my regular co-hosts. We'll start first with one, Mr. Anthony Bachman. What's up, fuckers? That's got to be a record for our first profanity on the show to start it. Yes! Fuck yeah! And then, of course, joining us... With his uh, special horse with him, one William D. Nelson. <laughs> his glitter horse. That's my horse of the apocalypse. I am one of the four horsemen. You I, are. I you figured, may be well, spared. I figure you just really like Red Dead Redemption. I've only played the first one, never the second one. Willie would ride into the apocalypse on a glittered wooden horse. Why not? Can you really tell it's glittered from there? No. No. We would have oh never known how to God is so us. fucking gaudy. I can't believe I rode that as a kid, but it was a different color because now it's been repainted. Why is there so much glitter on it? I can't. It just, it's still. Ah, uh, glitter. Like my brain Craft can't comprehend it. Ah. <laughs> oh. It's like my, it's like a fucking HP Lovecraftian thing where my mind's going mad just looking at it. God damn. It's okay, Willie. You're going to survive this, and you're going to thrive when it's all I don't know. It sounds like it's going to do pure, like, nonstop damage to him. Because now it's going to haunt him because it's always back there. It's always behind him. I didn't him. even notice it till the start of the podcast. I never looked back there. <laughs> Just imagine <laughs> what else could be in. behind you. See that? No. Here's, right here's the best part, Willie. Now, every once in a while, you're going to hear that whinny sound from the zombie horse in Dead by Daylight behind you. Oh, you mean from the uh, uh what's that? What's the what's the uh, add-on? The 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 standalone kind of DLC to it. Wait, Willie. Nightmare or something. Willie, do you hear that? Yeah. That coming. That coming from far away. <laughs> There's only one <laughs> Winnie that I am always scared of, <laughs> the and that's poo. one of the thoroughbred of sin. Bad horse. Bad horse. Bad horse. Yeah, I do not want to be his mare. <laughs> <laughs> God, that line was so underrated in that movie. I need to watch that again. I got it on Blu-ray. His mayor. I got it on Blu-ray, too. About a long time ago. That was a good one. It's the only musical I own. That's basically the only musical I like. Now, own, would you consider digital that you own it? If you paid money and bought a copy of something digitally, you own it. Technically, I bought The Sound of Music for the ex-wife. She has. She kept the movie. <laughs> But it's still under my Voodoo account, so I still have it yeah. digitally. Well, you still yeah, have a I license to a digital it. copy. There's nothing yeah. illegal that your so Voodoo tech- license is not tied to your physical copy. Well, I, I would say that I would say that you own that then. Now, or, had yeah. you, for instance, taken that DVD and Blu-ray and ripped it and put it in your Plex library and then given the disc to your ex-wife when she left, then technically that is illegal because you have an archive of a copy you no longer own. If well, Chris jumps right to legalities. We're just arguing whether or not somebody owns something. Well, no. I mean, the only reason I bring that up is I've been ripping a bunch of my media to put in my own Plex server. And it's not like you can rip your own DVDs, right. then sell them and keep those digital copies. Chris all is right, making right, all right, all right, all right. theater in his house. All right. All right. Let, let's, all right. You, you put on some hypotheticals here. All right. Now, I didn't actually technically give her the disc. She took it. I paid for it. So what would you say there in that case? I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how that works. I but, I legal, so but, in your, but, but, but in your mind, what would you say? Would you say I technically still own it? Would you say you should get in trouble for that? Would you say that's in the wrong? Why would you get in trouble for it? You own a distinct, separately no. legal digital copy. She should get in trouble. Technically, you still own the physical copy, and she should have to give it back. I mean, if I also you want it and didn't give it to her. Or two, but that ain't happening. Exactly. I'm not saying you will. That was five years ago that got stolen legally, from me. <laughs> I would say you used to own the physical copy as sure. well. Then again, my bitch ex-wife took my copy of the Nightmare on Elm Street Blu-ray series. I had to buy new ones. Did she? Was she a fan? No. Just to piss you off? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Trust me. I, I've, I've had some <laughs> things about that, too. Yeah, see, the one great thing I have uh, from her is that I kind of had to... Well, I didn't really steal it from her, 
because when we got together, she had this awesome fucking like um, wood grained um, like uh, poster of the Rocky Horror Picture Show of, you know, it had the lips and Tim Curry laying across it. And I was like, oh, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. And so we had it. And all of a sudden, she, one day she was like, yeah, I'm, I want to throw it away. Would you take it to the garbage? Like, throw it away? This thing's awesome. Why would you want to throw it away? It's like, well, fine. You want to keep it? I was like, sure. So that's technically her giving it to me, even though we were still together and living together. But when we, when we separated, I was like, I'm going to go hide it. this in my truck so uh, <laughs> so she doesn't see it and just take it. Because technically, she did give it to me. Yeah, technically, that would be a gift. I mean, she was wanting to throw it away, and I was the one saying no. Like, That's plus, crazy. why would you throw it away, too? It was, it was nice. I mean, I'm sure it's like probably like 15 bucks at like a blockbuster or something. That's a collector's still, item, not, then, because those don't exist. Well, I mean, I'm guessing. I'm not saying it was. Oh. I have no idea where it was bought from. Man, I got to carry the banner here as the lone married person on this show. It's a very strange sensation for me. I don't like it. Well, you, it's your choice. Well, we've all been married, people. You're just the only one That's still, still doing married. it. Well, I've only been married for a little over <laughs> a year At least you're now, happily so. married. I mean, it's only been a year. She's got enough That's... time. She might have gotten tired of me by now. That's true, Chris. The important thing to remember is no happy marriage ever ended in divorce. Me and Willie are both happily divorced. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know if that's more on me now. I look back on it because I, right now, I'm so much loving my alone time. I love alone time with me. Hey, there's I nothing could, wrong. I, mean, I can play games, hear people, I can talk to people and stuff. And then when I want to go and just be alone again, I'm like, all right, guys, I'll see you guys later. Bloop. There's nothing wrong with having your own space yeah. and your own time. I oh. totally get that. I, I mean, I, but me as a person, I really, really like it. Like, that's something I, I need and crave. If I could just not see anybody for a long time, I'd probably be okay. Maybe not fully mentally, but I mean, I'd probably be okay. Well, I mean, pandemic's kind of giving me a lot of alone time right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so weird because I haven't really been affected by it because I'm mostly alone anyway. So well, it's, it really- it's been really weird for me because while I may not have gone out a lot during the week or anything, I was in my regular schedule of, you know, going into the office where I would talk to my coworkers and stuff. Yeah. And since the late second or the second to last week of March, I want to say it was, I've been working from home. So Are you still working from home? I'm still working from home. Oh, Jesus. I forgot that was still going on yeah, for you. Yeah, so... I mean, it's, it's awesome in this regard, people. which is my alarm goes off at 515. I take the dog out. I feed the dog. And then I go down to my office, which is also the podcasting space, at about 530. And I start work at 530 and I work my shift and I have all afternoon because I'm not driving 45, 50 minutes down to work to get a bunch of stuff done. So I really like that. But at the same time, I didn't realize how I'm not a hugely social creature, but I kind of enjoyed the social aspect of you know being in the office from time to time. Did you just say your commute is forty five minutes? Forty five to fifty minutes each way. Jesus Christ! I thought my thirty, my forty minute commute was bad. Jeez, forty five to fifty. I don't mind it in the summer. In the winter, it's more of a problem. But I guess supposedly they're talking about. Uh, Why is it a problem in the winter? Because interstate and snow. It's not a good combination. Do you get a lot of snow in the winter? Yes. Oh, we and don't. And then they don't really take care of the roads very well because yeah, they want to save the money for other things. Don't get me started on it. So. Sometimes we'll get like a dusting of snow and we'll shut things down that my 50 minute drive ends up taking two and a half hours. <laughs> well, when Willie was on the road, I will say two of the worst states to drive through were Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Yeah. West well, Virginia's I mean, I say terrible. West Virginia because the only there's only one way to go through West Virginia when you're driving that truck and that's the West Virginia Turnpike. Why is that a uh, toll road? I don't know. It's not. It's not good enough to be a toll road. Money. The road is not good enough. Doesn't for matter. It. You got a choice. Not, That's how they get. Yeah, the money. toll road doesn't does, does, isn't determined by whether it's a good road or not. It's about whether or not the state wants to take money well, for it. I mean, if you take the money for it, put it back into the road at least a no. little bit. Well, at least in the a pocket of all bit. the politicians that made the toll roads. <laughs> and then, and luckily. Uh, they upped it when I quit. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't have to deal with that bullshit. One of the things I do not wasn't miss paying for it. about living like around the, the naval base, uh, my two years in Chicago and everywhere we drove around there, Illinois and all those states, all those toll roads, I don't miss that shit at all. There are no toll roads out west. They don't charge you for using the fucking street. I mean, Ohio <laughs> has some too, I can tell you that. And that was kind of like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think there's any... This I don't country think there's any farm of road is fucking toll road? What? I think 
west of like Oklahoma and Texas, I don't think there's any of them that make it past that part of the U.S., like past the middle. There's only like, there's one I know of in my state. There's only one, and that's in the state capital. Other than that, I have I don't ever have to deal with – I've never dealt with a toll road, so dealing with uh, that job, that was about it. So the Toll yeah. roads are weird. Toll roads are sure. bullshit. You already pay taxes to build the roads, and then they charge you for using specific roads. It's like, well, you already took my tax money, you prick. I mean, <laughs> toll roads may be bullshit, but you know it isn't bullshit. Go ahead. News of the week. Yep. Wow. Live from the ATG and Studios on uh, the internet. It's the news of the week. Hey everyone, welcome to that part of the show that is the news of the week. It's where we run down what is in our minds some of the most interesting, geeky and or nerdy news to have popped up here in the past week and share it with you guys who are watching live. Now, Willie and Anthony's news is going to build off of each other, so we'll save them for the later two sections of news of the week and I'll kick things off, unless there's any objection, of course. That's fine. It's your fucking show. You do what you goddamn want. It's our show. No one owns the show. <laughs> you don't want all the goddamn buttons. I mean, I can push some more buttons for you if you don't want, Willie. Don't push any goddamn buttons. Push the button. You want me to push a button for you, Willie? I didn't say that. I'm looking Willie, over. I think you're just stupid. <laughs> I've heard that time or two. go up from a people or two. That's all I was going to push was just that one button so that Naki can be a part of this show now. She's not here, but she's a part of the show still because we have her on the oh, Wait, is that the only reason you push that button so she gets her royalties? That's some bullshit. What royalties? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into the news and we'll talk about Time Warner slash DC, things like that because it really confuses. Before we get into my specific story, did you see? Because no one shoots himself in the foot like DC. I know, right? Did you see <laughs> they have now decided how to fix their HBO Now, HBO Go, HBO Max naming conventions? Go ahead. They're going like to shut down. H- They're going to shut down HBO Go, rename HBO now to HBO, and then keep HBO as HBO Max. Wait, so they're still going to have HBO and HBO Max? They're still going to have two different things, two yes, different apps? Because not everyone has the ability to get the HBO Max on their devices yet. You still can't get the HBO Max app That's on a Roku them. or a Fire TV stick. Oh, it's almost like they rushed it and didn't design it correctly and didn't have all their shit figured out before they made it. That's on them. Why didn't they just wait till the... Why didn't they just make it available for other platforms? What Be- the... Okay, wait, wait. So it, it's not that the app doesn't work there. They probably have the app ready to go and distribute on there. It's all about negotiations and deals as to how the app is going to integrate into like the Roku channel store and the Amazon channel store where if someone chooses to subscribe directly through Roku and Amazon, they then get a cut of that subscription fee. That is what they're still negotiating. It's not because of technical limitations. It's because of money limitations. Yay, money. Well, that's neither here nor there. The real news I had, and I think we touched on it probably two or three weeks back, is that when they announced the Snyder Cut, also came the news that Henry Cavill had signed a new deal with DC to appear in more DC movies. However, comma, it was not to star in a Superman movie. It was basically to use Henry Cavill the same way Samuel L. Jackson was used as Nick Fury in the Marvel movies as connective <laughs> tissue and someone who crosses over between them. That's the intent that they had there. Which is the dumbest shit I've ever heard for a character that's already had a standalone movie and two other movies that he was the co-star of. Right. Now we're going to make him the highlight character. Who, with oh, an, don't forget the guest appearance in Shazam. With an actor that is, well, it wasn't actually Henry Cavill. The character, the suit, but the yes, character yeah. I'm mentioning. The character. Let's also not and aren't they going to put him into it? I hadn't heard that one, but I guess it's possible. Let's also not forget, though, that Henry Cavill's star continues to rise. Past, I mean, remember, he was one of the... Yeah things people were most interested in the new mission impossible whether you liked the witcher or not the witcher became kind of a phenom there for a while there's a lot and he was good and it wait wait wait, wait, hold a second are you saying people didn't like the witcher there are some people that did not like the witcher mostly because i heard this the time travel aspect was confusing to a lot of folks i will yeah i will definitely say that there was no point to that time jumping or at least not mentioning that hey we're jumping through time yes. they should have at least made that known yeah and they did say s- add anything to it they did say anyway, season two confused by that's too stupid to watch television i was confused for the first three episodes i was like what's going like on like i said like Fuck i said you <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a time jump it was literally telling a story from two different time periods and oh. then they joined 
Oh, that's not a time jump. That's a fucking convention of storytelling. Shit, since you put it like that, still fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That shit was not hard to figure out. It was for like the first two episodes. I think it was like two episodes or something. I was like, I had to look it up. I was like, oh, they're jumping through time. Like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Why did they just tell me that? Yeah. So it well, does nothing to save it. Yeah. Whatever. Let's spin back to the news story itself, which is yeah, yeah, they're yeah. bringing Henry Cavill in to be Superman in a variety of movies, but nothing has been mentioned about a solo film. And why is that? So there is a site <laughs> out there. Because <laughs> DC and Warner Brothers are stupid. Yes. Uh, according to the site Heroic Hollywood, the studio believes that, quote, let me get on full screen for this, a standalone Superman movie would not be successful at this time. Perhaps Bullshit. once there's more momentum after playing a supporting role in some successful DC films, there would be more of a chance for a standalone film. That's the quote. Now, it's if bullshit. you guys want to take a moment to laugh at the stupidity of that, we can do that yeah, and then proceed with the news. Possibly the dumbest quote ever if that actually did come from a DC executive, but I don't doubt it because they've been fucking up everything since Chris Reeves stopped being Superman. Well, they don't understand Superman, especially in today's world. No. You don't try and turn Superman into one of us. You don't try and turn him into the brooding emo sad guy. That's not Superman. Nope. Superman is the inspiration to people. He's the paragon of virtue. He's the big blue boy scout. He's supposed to be there as an inspiration and a comfort to people, always helping people, stuff like that. That's what they haven't gotten. We sort of got a twist yeah. on that. Joss Whedon's Justice League and why well, I think the Justice League movie is flawed. One of the best things about it was the fact that you got a Superman that was Superman. Yeah, near the end of the movie, it was actual the big blue boy scout. And the fact that Fucking executives at Warner Brothers and DC still can't figure this shit out. They did Captain America. A gung-ho, all-American apple pie character fucking works if you write it correctly. And if you play it correctly. And you can't tell me that the big blue cheese doesn't work because the big red cheese worked just fine because Shazam was awesome. And right. he's even cheesier than fucking Superman. So there's this is a the one character that makes Superman look gritty is Shazam. There's a tweet that's making the rounds right now. It's a picture of Captain America holding Mjolnir in one hand and his shield in the other. And the guy says, it's Kevin McGuire is his handle, is his name, at McGuire Kevin on Twitter. And says, if audiences all over the world cheered the success of this guy, you could make a movie, a Superman movie that works. And you could. I, I, that's the thing that astounds me is this is equivalent to someone. Superman's one of the big three at DC Comics. Arguably one of their biggest superheroes. Been around the longest, has the most name recognition. That's equivalent to Marvel saying, assuming they owned the rights full out, saying, we don't think now's the right time to do a Spider-Man movie because he well, needs I mean, some more success in tie-in <laughs> moves, movies first. But in all fairness, Superman's way more recognizable than Spider-Man. Yes and no. Maybe here in the United States, but when you start looking at no. international... Worldwide. The S logo is one of the top three known icons on the planet. I don't know. Has Japan made a knockoff uh, Superman movie like they did with Spider-Man back in the 70s, 80s? I don't remember when that came out. That was a TV show, I think. Still something. Yeah. <laughs> there was also another guy, uh, Hector Navarro on Twitter, at Hector is funny, who said, a standalone Superman movie where the character is allowed to be Superman that is made by people who love Superman and are not embarrassed by Superman would be successful. And yeah. Round of applause. That's part of what I think is the problem is when they rebooted Superman to make him grim and gritty, it was we're embarrassed. Um, it's seemingly we're embarrassed with the big blue Boy Scout type of character and don't think that would work. And maybe not 100 percent that would work, but you could tone it back and not just completely change the character into something else. I'm just really bummed that, oh, we don't think Superman's going to work. So let's not do anything major with him when Henry Cavill is awesome in the role. And let's be honest. That dude can act his ass off, and he was really good yeah. as Clark Kent and Superman. Could you imagine him getting a chance to to play the right Superman? I know, Willie, you like Man of Steel. I'm not taking a shot at you. I still like it. And, and that's fine. You can like it. I think I don't, personally. But Henry Cavill was awesome in it, even though that was not the Superman that I envisioned. He was still awesome in the role. I mean, I probably the reasons you guys don't like it. I liked it because... It's like, what would really happen if you had these powers as a kid? Like, you would be, like, freaking out a little bit, would you not? No, the yeah. freakout scenes were fine. It was okay. the bad parenting and the poor storyline. Yeah, I will say that whole Kevin Costner just going yeah. into the tornado, that was kind of stupid. Like That, him telling Clark, well, maybe you should have let those kids die? No fucking way does Jonathan Kent ever say that in 90 years of comics. 
that maybe Clark should have let the kids die. Well, I don't like it because of Kevin Costner. <laughs> you don't like Kevin Costner is fine. The lines they had or, in the liberal were yeah. god awful. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't have a problem with Kevin Costner. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, yeah, the whole character is like, I don't really. Uh, he's dead to do in the, yeah. you know, the, the quarter dying way in the dying in the tornado through. thing totally missed the important part of Pa Kent's death, which is that it has to be something that Superman can't fix. Well, here's my That's question. why it's a learning moment when Pa Kent's standing next to him at the fence in the original movies and he has a heart attack because now, here's the guy next to him that loves him more than anything who can literally move the planet and he's not able to save his own dad. Because it's something that he can't do. That's what makes that moment human and makes it a learning moment and makes it a Superman moment. In the fucking Man of Steel, he literally could have flown to his dad, grabbed him, and pulled him back before the witnesses even noticed. It was fucking pointless. And it was to save a dog. Are you fucking kidding me? That was a that was the dumbest scene in the entire DCEU. Everything I- they shot, nothing's dumber than than the scene of Jonathan Kent's death in that movie. All right, I have a question that you guys can answer. Um, and it might lead to a second question. When did uh, when did Paul Kent die in the comics? Which time? Yeah, because it's, it's... There's yeah, been it's multiple reboots, how they've handled action it. Action comics, the yeah. Well, in the original run. Let's say the original, I guess. When did, did he die or something? Because I don't... I remember I remember I have the... I, I remember reading the comic when Superman went got his electrical powers or something, and Paul Kent was still there. I think he had yeah, died, and then they like rebooted. The 13th and... Reboot. <laughs> so oh, that's okay. the thing okay. is because the, of all the Earth or something. Yeah, all of the crises and stuff like that have undone the Jonathan Kent deaths a few different times. In, okay. Even when they've done yeah, it. Put, the it more... put it this way: here's an iFanboy.com callback. There's a top five deaths of Jonathan Kent article in May of 2012. Yeah. Fair enough. I was just, I thought it was still. <laughs> yeah. My whole thing it, was, I was thinking that he would live through it, and you're like, why are all these no. movies killing him off? That it, makes no sense. It's comics. He's not quite Uncle Ben, but no, his his death has been has been redone a couple of times. So. Oh, we, oh, we, oh, you're going to have to pull out a Spider-Man because <laughs> he's more worldwide known? <laughs> so let, let's pull back a sec. Regardless of individual opinions and stuff on the Man of Steel movies and current things, this just seems like a short-sighted thought to be like, oh, now's not the right time to do a Superman movie when it's arguably one of your most recognizable characters. He's the big three in DC. It's Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. Those are the big three characters everyone thinks of. Yeah, and you're not an illegal do alien that fights for everybody's rights would, wouldn't work right now in this political God, climate. I wish we I don't had know one right what now. they're thinking. Someone whose biggest villain is an idiotic, buffoonish billionaire. Like, well, no, no one would ever want to see a villain like that get trounced. Well, hold on a second. Are you saying Lex Luthor is idiotic and buffoonish? I would depends on who's right now. It depends on the Fair iteration enough. of Lex Luthor. Yeah, there's been lots of versions of him where he's an idiot. <laughs> Fair enough. I've no, I've not seen those. Well, I don't read much DC. So they're not all Gene Hackman. Oh, yeah, Gene it Hackman's varies cool. depending on who's Hack doing it Man? and what what reboot we're currently in. Sometimes they're a piss poor autistic version of the guy that runs Facebook and somehow act or just Lex Luthor because that's their character's name. I thought that was Dr. Doom in uh, the fan four stick. Fan four stick. Wasn't he just a blogger? <laughs> yeah. No, he was never just a blogger. That was some <laughs> article that somebody wrote about. So like he wasn't, he wasn't much more than a blogger, but no, he I actually was a scientist, but. Uh, that at least have Michael B. Jordan in it. His yeah, torch was actually not bad. The rest yeah, of the movie was, was god awful. Where was that whole scene with the thing dropping down and attacking? Oh, like, you, the, you mean the, the best scene in the face. movie that was in the trailer and not in the film? Yeah. 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 I love it when they do that. Yeah, he had his uh, Captain America moment. Like, did he have a parachute? No. <laughs> I'm the fucking thing. It's clobbering time. Yep. Uh, and then it wasn't in there. Like, why was that the? You think that was the studio or Josh Trank? Oh wait, Josh Trank didn't have any say in that movie. <laughs> yeah, his say kind of got taken away as he gradually went crazy on set yeah. from how I. It was studio. Read. What was what was your problem, Fox? What was what was the issue there? What why couldn't you show the thing attacking things? Wow, well, they seem to be good at messing up Fantastic Four movies. That's Thank right. God, Fox will not be ruining any more fucking Marvel movies. So hey, at least, at least we, we got that going for one. us. We got what? At least we got the Corman one. That's true. It's always Roger Corman. God, that's terrible. 
the rubber suited thing. <laughs> well, that's probably the. Oh no, actually, I just I actually enjoyed that for the the first Fox one that came out with uh, Michael Chiklis. I like. It was a good movie. I still was, love yeah. Chris Joy. Evans as the Human Torch. Oh yeah, he that was, yeah. nailed Johnny Storm in that second movie when they tell him to fly off after whatever that thing is, and he looks at his he looks at Reed and goes, "But it's Dolce." Like that was fucking Johnny Storm. He didn't want to use his superpowers because it would ruin his suit. And let's like not that also, was perfect. That was fucking perfect. Let's not forget Chris Evans also crossed over from uh, from uh, Marvel to DC movies to Marvel movies again. You are correct. And Losers. Independent. That was a good movie too. Yeah, Losers. The cast of Losers. But, uh, what's his is name amazing. within it too? Is the main. If you uh, go back, um, yeah, Negan's in it. Yeah, that's it. What's his name? Jeffrey Dean Morgan. That's it. Yeah, who's Batman's dad and the comedian. The and Negan, like, and and the dad of Sam and Dean Winchester on Super. That man has more geek cred than any actor working. That was a muscle suit in Watchmen. Like, I had no idea, so I saw the pictures of him. Put, I was like, "What? That looks so good." Well, the comedian was a muscle suit. Yes. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, they did that a good job. With really I mean, good. That, I was like, "Damn!" Visually, that movie is stunning. Like they oh, yeah. nailed everything, and it is right, straight up the comic. Yeah, the, other than the end scene, like and other ending, than that. I yeah. think the ending makes more sense than the original anyway. Eh. Well, those have a giant space Argu- alien just come Arguable. Out. Or we can make it look like Dr. Manhattan just did, you know, bomb the world. That makes For more no sense. no reason whatsoever. Well, he's just turning on people. His uh, disdain mm. for humanity is just gone. It's which is plot. Mm. Yeah. I thought it made more sense than, you know, a giant octopus monster. Did you ever actually read Watchmen? I did at one time. I was a long time ago, and I remember nothing of it besides being <laughs> so confused by the jumping in time thing again. It was like, oh god, here. Well, we that go. was when I was reading it. I didn't understand what that was. What was going on when I was first reading? It. I was like, I'm so confused here. Go read Watchmen four times, and then once you get it, tell me if the movie is a better ending or not. You know what? I don't think I want to read the words of that racist. <laughs> Racist or not, it's still one of the best stories ever written. I ain't read H.P. Lovecraft. I just know a Lovecraftian monster when I see one. <laughs> That's fair. So I think that wraps up our conversation here regarding... Wait, wait. Lovecraft was a real Lovecraftian monster all along. Well, of course he was. <laughs> Draftsman brings up a good point. He says, visually, Watchmen is a stunning movie, but misses the point of the book. If you actually like Watchmen, go watch the HBO series. It's in my queue. I have not gotten to it. But yeah. everyone has said it's really good. Don Johnson. Really I've good. heard amazing things about it. I like Don Johnson. In it, yeah, I'm doing the the free trial of Showtime right now. I've gotten all the way through Billions, and I'm watching all the way back through Homeland right now. Once that free trial is over, then I'm going to do the HBO free trial. Because, yeah, I've heard amazing okay. things about Watchmen. And, and then if I have time, I'll watch some of the Westworld. Because I've heard this. I'll tell you, you should go after that. You should go to Stars to watch, uh, was it um, American Gods? There you go. Going into the I chat- watched the first season. All right. Going into the chat room, I think you might have gotten Alan Moore confused because Draftsman, I think, is right. He says Alan Moore's not racist. Oh, what is he? Yeah, now? no, oh, he's a wizard. Like, yeah, he's a, he's yeah, a Alan, crazy wizard. A grand Alan wizard? A wizard. No, he's, no, he's, he's just a crazy dad. wizard. <laughs> no, I thought he was just, something. I thought he hated some. He was like an asshole or a homophobe no, or something. A, I mean, he is an asshole. Yeah. But I don't believe he's ever had any uh, accusations of racism or homophobia. Yeah. He's just. Okay, I thought I remember that. No, oh, well. he was he oh, well. was the one that claimed that he wanted nothing to do with any of his mo- his books ever being turned into films. He hates all the movies. He doesn't. He literally said that Watchmen could not be filmed. Like when he wrote it, he said it was a story that could not be made into a movie. And my problem, my biggest fucking problem with that was that Zack Snyder, after making Watchmen, he brought. I heard the story that he wanted. He wanted to bring it to him, and Al Moore's like, "I don't fucking care." He's like, "Al yeah, Moore no. pretty much put his his words into that movie, pretty much verbatim," and it just said, "Yeah, I don't care about it." Yeah, he didn't watch V for Vendetta. Apparently, he's never watched any of the books based on any of his material. He doesn't give a fuck what anybody good, does with them after he's done writing. That, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, he cuts himself off from all of that. He has to nothing to do with it. Defend him a little bit. I mean, after his well, that first uh, little run of uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I can't blame him for not wanting anything else to be in a movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot blame him. That's, That's the movie that made fucking uh, what's his name quit movies. Sean Connery. Ed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about a movie that didn't hold up to the original the original um, stories. Because wow, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen are great comics. Like those oh, are some amazing ideas. But yeah, that movie was whoa, whoa! It was Transformers good. I only have one memory <laughs> of that movie too, and I just remember like it was uh, uh, Mr. Hyde going, 
it's so painful. <laughs> I just had I, that one scene. I actually like the CGI they did for the Hyde character. Like yeah. it was a cool transformation. Yeah, but a lot of it just what's going on? It was kind of dumb, but fun dumb. That means that I think we have wrapped up this news point. So let's move on to the next ones. They're kind of related, but I think we need to toss things to Willie first because we got a little console reveal this week, didn't we, Willie? Well, finally. It got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back again. But now we finally got it. Uh, the console reveal for the PlayStation 5. And uh, so you're going to have a new router in your home because that's what it looks like. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a router over a college fridge. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, the PlayStation uh, uh, actual console, the look of it, it pretty much does look like a router. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. That's what it looks like. Um, but, I mean, I'm all right with it. But they are releasing two different SKUs, um, a disk version, or uh, one that has a disk drive in it, and one that's a digital-only version. So it has no disk drive. And so that... But what the one thing they didn't say during the whole thing was... The price of it, and that nope. I'm a little worried about that. They didn't Same say with the Microsoft, price of. It. To be fair, Microsoft has not revealed the price of the Xbox yeah. Series X either. Yeah, but we when, when was our conference? Point, so we're month? closer to the holiday season. Uh, Microsoft and Sony are doing similar things here, which is they're going to do multiple smaller events to build up to talk about everything that's happening fair. with it. Now, if you look at your history, the consoles will probably be released in November. If you look at your yeah. history, that's probably the the dates coming out and we already know that there's going to be released by holiday of 2020 because the, the in the spider-man miles morales trailer which i'm excited for that was just a cinematic little teaser there was no gameplay shown of that um it did say uh holiday 2020 right. didn't say a date but it did say holiday 2020 it didn't say 2021 so, i don't know if I haven't heard any Sony execs say this, but I assume it's the case. Phil Spencer came out on the Microsoft side of the house and said that coronavirus and things like that are not going to impact their release plans for the Series X. It will still release on time. And in fact, most of their manufacturing, from what I'd read, oh, is, is that the not name of currently it? currently in China. The Xbox Series X. Jesus, I can't keep... I seriously can't keep them That's straight. Fair. <laughs> That's fair. Well, what was the Xbox, yeah. Pro, Xbox One Pro version? What was that called? Xbox One X. And the next Xbox is Xbox Series X? Yes. That's not. Yeah. I didn't even know it was that confused. <laughs> I thought I was just thinking wrongly. That are you seriously? No, that, that's what they're called. What the hell? Microsoft. That's so. That's that's like saying we and we you. That's that. That's even more confusing than that. And Sony fucking with everybody, calling it the PS Five. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. Which system is this? Technically, it's the seventh system they released <laughs> because you had the PSP and the PS Vita. <laughs> Those weren't systems. Those are just little fucking toys. Those are, no, those, those are systems. No, 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 that no, Vita no. had some horsepower to it. Oh, and, oh, and dude, the the, the um, Vita owners, they are a dead hard fan base. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. The the in, the um, attachment rate for buying games on the Vita is probably the most out of any console that ever got released. The most. Like, I think, I, for, I forget what, this is like years ago too, when I saw like um, the average Vita owner owns like like I can't remember how many games, like thirteen games or something. Like that's the average. Like in so you have you know, it's just it's I can't remember the exact number. I'm just talking off my head, so don't take me verbatim here. But yeah, it was a. I remember seeing that and it was a crazy amount. And I I had a bunch of um, Vita games. I had some weird ones too because you know me, I like some weird games. I mean, um, you know what? I'm I'm gonna be telling to myself here. One of the weirdest Vita games I had was Monster Mon Piece. Which it was a card battling game with pretty much uh, not hentai because they couldn't release that, but it was very a lot of fan servicey, very very fan servicey, and it was uh, it was actually a fun card game. I had fun with it, but the weird thing was to upgrade your cards. You had to pull them out in the mode, turn your Vita on its side because it had a touch screen on the front and well, in the back, but the touch screen on the front you had to rub the card in the right spot to upgrade the card. <laughs> It was very weird, but I mean, <laughs> it was a fun game. It was a fun card battling game. Yeah. Monster? I've heard Monster. about that one before. Yeah, but like you said, price isn't out yet. A lot of people are estimating yeah. somewhere between, well, this is where it gets weird, four to $600 is what a lot of estimates yeah. are. The interesting thing that I saw that they did, which I'm kind of intrigued by, is there's the PlayStation 5 without a disk drive, and there's mm -hmm. the all-digital version with 
one yeah, that yeah. does have a disk drive. And there are a lot of people, like I know, for instance, Willie, you're someone who's gone predominantly to digital games, but you were talking on the stream yesterday about why you're going to get the disk-based PS5. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're asking me what that is. All right, yeah. So uh, the reason I'm probably going to get the disk-based uh, PS5 is for one reason and one reason only, because I own a lot of 4K Blu-rays. And I would like to put that into a system and actually watch them as opposed yeah. to just stream them because my internet's not the best. So every now and then the internet will go, it'll like, it'll like pause the movie and like, oh, great. So let me figure this out. So, but if I have the, you know, the console that just plays it, I can just put it in. Don't have to worry about the internet. And it's in 4K. And yeah, that was the thing that weirded me out when they, right. in, the, in the presentation, when they made a big deal about the fact that it plays the, the high end 4k blu-ray discs and then they're like and here's a version that doesn't have a disc drive so, well then i guess that well, one doesn't play the high end 4k blu-ray discs. well because I mean, it can't because that's it literally can't unless you can yeah. shove it in there some way yeah, it's, it's weird that like that was part of the promo that they're advertising hey we finally made a, a because you know the ps4 even the ps4 pro that i got doesn't play those it doesn't well, play the full version of the high end shit like for someone Which, like with a TV like Chris, no where it's sense. got fucking all the bells and whistles, even the brand new PS4 can't play those discs at the high end. Yeah, and so they're like, okay, here's our new system that Xbox does did right. Yes, yeah, was, like, yeah. And so Sony comes out and says, well, here's our new system, but it does play them, except one of the versions doesn't have a disc drive. Yeah, but it's a cost cutting measure. It's the same reason oh, yeah. why the original Xbox yeah. didn't play DVDs unless you bought the DVD remote, because and then you didn't have to pay the license for. Uh, what was it? It was Dolby. They had to pay a license to, and someone else for being able to spin up the discs. Something. Yeah, something like oh, yeah, that. So the license was cost was yeah, in was the remote itself. When right. you bought the remote, that was the, where the license. Yeah, and that's came. where the license was. So basically, you're buying a a license when you bought that remote. That's why you could theoretically, with a jailbroken Xbox, watch DVDs on it. But so that's a cost cutting measure. If they don't put a disc drive on there, they don't have to pay that licensing fee to Dolby and whoever else to be able to spin up discs. And I don't think it's a terrible idea to do an all digital one though, because there no, are a lot of folks out there. They're like, oh, yeah. this is annoying that I have to spin up my disc drive to do things. Or like they just never use it in Willie's case. Well, it makes sense because he's making it the center of his entertainment console, basically to be able to play movies off of it. Yeah. The P the PlayStation one, if you will, if you want to call it that, let's just go. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. See, it makes no. That's the only reason I would get the digital version if it wasn't for that one little itty bitty thing. The PS4 Pro should have been able to play it. There's no reason that it shouldn't have because Blu-ray yeah. is Sony. Sony owns the right is the maker of Blu-ray. They own the rights to it and everything. Yeah. Why could they not put it in there? Yet Xbox could. Like that makes no sense to me. <laughs> oh, it just came down to who wanted to pay the money to license to get the proper yeah. licenses to do it. I mean, they, who, the license to who? They they own the right to the the disc and everything. Yeah, but don't Dolby, they, they don't. How? And if it's doing like Dolby Surround and things like that, based off there, that's that, part of the license. Movie by movie, it ended up to the movies to put it out, the studios or something to put make it out. I Dolby? don't know. Yeah, that's, don't. that's all in that legalese stuff between all the little different you know parts of a manufacturer. Just because Sony owns something doesn't mean everybody that works at Sony and all their divisions has access to it. That's fair. But I mean, I just I just know like every time you buy an Xbox, you know, disc, you, Sony gets a little bit of money for it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just it is weird. I think it's a good idea to have the two different versions. But yeah, it's just it's very strange that the one of the big selling points of the presentation was something that only one of the versions has. I don't think they knew the gra- the right way to sandwich it in that they were doing that. But I do want to bring up yeah. right now we had a comment from Ramen Anxiety. It said the PlayStation Five is a router, Xbox Series X a refrigerator, and the Nintendo Switch is a toaster. Why I wanted to bring that up is there have been a lot of uh, Reddit internet detectives, for lack of a better term, trying to figure out roughly how big these consoles are going to be based off the USB port sizes and the disk drive sizes. And there's an interesting picture I was able to get from Reddit, assuming this came up correctly, that is the uh, size comparison between a variety of different consoles. This is from user R, excuse me, Hmm. Reddit user U slash BO7. That's comparing the PS3 Slim, PS3, PS4, PS5, and then all of the Xboxes of the current generation. I really hate those acronyms down there for all the Xboxes. You always uh-huh. do, Willie. Uh-huh. That's, that's neither here nor there with what we're discussing. <laughs> no, that is here <laughs> and now. Hey, it's still got your unprotected <laughs> advice logo on there. My bad. Um, <laughs> we're not I doing that right now. There. I'm too focused. 
Why are all the oh they're highlighting it red? They're highlighting in red the USB ports and the uh, yeah and the size of the disk drive. And the size of the disk drive. So try and figure out roughly how big these devices are. And the PS5 is a bit taller, has those fins that make it look like a router or an Alienware PC. It kind of seems like yeah. Uh, based off of people looking on Reddit trying to figure out what they think the size is, they said they estimate the PS4 comes in a little over 14 inches tall. It will be thinner than the Series X, but it's hard to deny. It's pretty huge compared to infamously large consoles like the original yeah. PS3 and the Xbox One. Oh, hold on a second. I'm, a little I'm looking here. at both of those, and I'm actually happy about both designs because honestly, I have a friend who, whenever she's streaming, has trouble with her PS4 Pro overheating. And I see the giant vents going along the edge of the PS5, and I look at the brick size, like fridge shape of the Xbox Series X. And at least both of them should be great for venting their fucking heat. Well, that's part of what like, they designed they're it both for. Both big as fuck, but hey, if they don't overheat, it's worth it. So the top of the Xbox <laughs> Series X, which we can't see the way this is described, but in its current orientation, the top oh, is pretty it. much just a big vent. Yeah, it's just a. It's just a big vent. And right? it also yeah. has lights on it. It does not have lights. That's paint. Oh, does that? That's that was made up? No, there's what? no lights. It's paint. Oh. And the PlayStation yeah. has lights. They did yeah, the take... PlayStation, yeah, the vents light up along the sides. Look, here, here's where that's problematic. If you have a closed entertainment center, I think the PS5 is great for it. But if you're someone like me, who most of their stuff that's up there is either gray or black, all of their consoles and stuff like that, yeah. the PS5... I'm waiting when I get a PS5 or if I do at some point in time, I'm waiting for them inevitably to do a bundle with something that has a different color PS5 yeah, he, just because. Have you, have you seen the boss logic? He yeah. already started work on right. it. Yeah. And that's boss that's logic's already done like three of them. And his Miles Morales PS5 is what everybody needs. Yeah. You know, there's going to be, there's going to be stuff you can cover over. I uh, we'll forget what they're called. The, um, the skins, skins, yeah, yeah. skins. There's going to be those. You can always do that. Yeah, But I don't want to yeah. have to do that on my five or $600 new console. Ooh. Yeah, you shouldn't. But I mean, yeah, it's going to happen. There'll yeah. be versions of it. Yeah. Cause a giant white one, like, I mean, well, I mean the Xbox 360 sold just fine. And it was a giant white fucking VCR. Like, I mean, does that, that aesthetic not look familiar to you? For the PlayStation 5? It does, but here's the thing. To my what, life though? has changed a lot since I had an Xbox 360 where I didn't give a shit what my entertainment yeah. center looked like because I was in college and it was stuck on a cardboard box next to my dresser that my TV was on. Now we're in a point now where I've actually you know, done proper cable management, set up surround sound and stuff like that. Where I don't know, but what does it look like to you? What What is the aesthetic uh, taken as inspiration from? An Alienware PC. No, no, no. I was going to go with the uh, the PlayStation VR. I guess it has all the same aesthetics, the white and the black. That's yeah. Uh, the blue lights. Mm -hmm. It's all just like that. So they're making all their stuff look the same. So like, so it all has a similar fine, aesthetic. So it all blends together. Here's my concern on it though, Willie with the PS five and the way they're showing it here, where one end has a big fat base so it can sit vertically. Can I set I, that console horizontally? I can't tell. I don't yeah. know about what that base is because every single version of the PlayStation since P PS2 has been, sh when it was first shown, had a base to it. Right. And it was shown on its side. I don't know if that's like a main feature or you have to buy that separately. I have never, ever kept my so, console vertical. Here's the thing. Ever. I wouldn't want my console vertically, vertically positioned either because the way my home uh, entertainment center is set up, all of the holes are rectangular on their side. So I would have nowhere to yeah. set that unless I was setting it on like the mantle and it would be almost as tall as the speaker that I have set on the mantle already, which just doesn't work for my setup. This is, I'm nitpicking. I realize that this is not one of those things that's going to drive yeah, whether I buy the console or not. If I, if I don't like it, it's still not going to make me be like, Oh, I'm not buying a PS five. If I decide to get one. Chris, we all know you're going to get a PS five for miles Morales. We all know it. Don't Maybe. even try. But here's the thing. I'm not in any rush to do it right now. Oh, and especially I'm bought into the Microsoft ecosystem, but Microsoft I've said on this show, hasn't done anything to make me like, Oh my God, I have to buy this because remember all of the Microsoft studios games for the next few years are going to play on all Xboxes. They'll just look better on the series X. So there's nothing there that makes me go, Oh my God, I need to buy the new Xbox series X to play halo because I can still play it on my Xbox that I currently have. So it's no big deal in that regard. The difference with the PlayStation 5 is the Miles Morales game, which we'll get to here in a minute. If I want to play it, the only way I can play it is on the PS5. It's actually become an interesting differentiation point between the two companies, which is 
I think it was one of the Microsoft uh, folks that worked there had made it, someone had mentioned something about, oh, I can only play Miles Morales on my PS5. And they said, this is where our smart delivery kind of comes into play, which is if you buy Halo on your Xbox, it'll run just fine there. But if you decide you want to get an Xbox Series X, as soon as you boot the game up in there, it uses their smart delivery tools, downloads all the assets to upgrade it to the Xbox Series X version of the game. And any third-party studios that buy in to do that, it'll work the same way, like Cyberpunk 2077 doing the same thing. So I think that's an interesting differentiation point. But it's a long-term play there right now. So I don't know if Sony's doing anything similar. Let's say, hypothetically, Willie, you wanted to play the new Cyberpunk game when it comes out. Your PS5 won't be available yet, so you buy it on PS4. Yes, PS5 is probably backwards compatible with all PS4 games. Oh, no, no, they've said it is for all PS4 games. So that's great. Anything else, no one knows. You can play Cyberpunk on your PS5, but do you get the optimized version for your PS5? I don't know if they're going to do anything like that. And that's an interesting differentiation point between the two consoles. This is not me trying to toot an Xbox horn or anything like that, but it's one of those things I would consider if I were starting to think about what console do I want to get. This just made me think, does this mean... So is this guaranteeing us, telling us that um, games are not going up in price at all right now? I don't know They're that it's told us that at all. I mean, because if you can buy the game on the three on the uh, Xbox One, and you just automatically have it for the whatever the hell the name is for the right. new one, I already forgot. Um, then. So, I mean, so that means it won't be going up in price because well, if they did, let's be honest. then why would anyone not buy the Xbox One version and then well, just automatically not, get Not all one? games will support it. It's only Microsoft Studios games and select third-party folks that sign up to do it. Now, other companies have signed up to say they will use smart delivery, but it is not a mandatory thing. So, let's go to an example of a company you like to shit on with EA. So, say Madden 21 comes out and you get it for your Xbox One and your Xbox One or whatever the new version is comes out two months later, and you go, oh, I want to play it on there. Sure, the game may run, but you may not get the Series X optimized version of it if they don't opt into smart delivery. And they may say, well, if you want the prettier version, you've got to go buy the full-blown copy for the Xbox One Series X. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I don't know. But let's be honest, the fuckery we get from EA, that wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. We're like, (laughs) oh... Well, you want to play the prettier version of Madden? You should have either waited to buy one copy when the new console was out, or you can buy it again. Tell me I'm wrong I mean, on that one. I mean, oh, yeah. we all know that. Yeah. EA is all about the dollars. So there's I mean, interesting they can stuff. Anyway, they need to buy more shit. I do think it's really interesting, though, seeing, and for those that are listening to the audio podcast, I just brought back up that image of all the consoles side by side trying to see how all the consoles differ in size. And I think it's interesting the two different approaches you see between Microsoft and Sony's plans on how to put that much horsepower in a case and then spread it out enough that they can cool it properly. I'm not saying either is right or wrong. It's just an interesting approach to have one that's tall and one that's more rectangular. Yeah, these the, the new consoles are getting closer and closer to just being pre-built PCs, I mean, gaming that's PCs. Effectively, what they are. I yeah, mean, they've yeah, all I mean, got pretty much the same they are now. to it. Like, like you know, being the optimized version of you know gaming PCs. I mean, PCs always going to be probably better because you can upgrade that at any point in time. Right. That that's the big thing with a PC, and that's the thing where it starts to get into these Xbox games you like, if you like the stuff that is really just exclusive there, which is Microsoft Studios, most of that stuff they're also putting out on PC also. So there's no reason why you could just be like, I'll buy a killer gaming PC, and then when I want to do console gaming, play on a PS5 or a Nintendo Switch or something like that. But I'll be honest, like I said, and I've said a few times on here, I'm in no rushed upgrade myself because I've still got a big back catalog of stuff I want to play, and a lot of it is on my Nintendo Switch right now. Which, okay. <laughs> like what? Uh, of course, I'll keep playing Animal Crossing. I'm playing Tales of Vesperia. I'm playing Tale. I'm playing uh, Dragon Quest XI. Uh, it's multi-platform. That's true, but I don't want to buy it on another console, and I can't transfer my save you game. You got it on the PS4 in the first place. But I don't play my PS4 very much, Willie. Whose fault is that? Why you look blaming me for that? I'm just saying, it's more convenient. All right. So here was the use case of why I bought a Japanese RPG that's available on both PS4 and Switch on my Switch because I can sit on my couch with my Switch and let my wife still be able to watch the TV without taking it over. Or I can just take it with me and go sit upstairs, lay on the bed, and play for a couple hours before I go to bed and stuff like that. 
He really meant the toilet. I don't actually play Switch games in the toilet. That's my Twitter time. Yeah, me either. That's Twitter time, Willie. Come on. <laughs> I mean, time. I just got a new Switch game, too, that I've been enjoying. What's that? Clubhouse games. Oh, very nice. It's actually fun. I have a lot of enjoyment out of it. The thing I'm really surprised, though, on all of these current next-gen consoles is the fact that everything's USB-A and not USB-C. That just surprised the hell Wait, out of me. Wait, what? It's all USB-A ports, not the USB-C ports like you have on the bottom yeah. of your cell phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. That one surprised me a little bit. I sort of understand it. I mean, I thought you were. So I thought you were saying like they're not USB. Uh, USB three. They they should be USB three, but well, and, that's why I thought you I were was saying USB C, like, like, like the kind yeah, of plug. C, it is. I know, but C it was the third letter. That's where my brain yeah. got a little mixed up. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because they showed off, and I don't know if they showed it on the PlayStation controller or not. I didn't pay enough attention, but like the new Xbox controller has a USB C port on it for charging and connecting, but it's a USB A port on the console itself. I mean, I'm sure it's hmm. going to be a C on the controller as I would well. Assume too. I mean, yeah, because uh, all like all those uh, what was the little fat ones like the PS3? They had those Mini ones. That, in my or cell, whatever, pretty much every cell phone I had, the PS controller used the same charging. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just going to say it's probably going to be like that. Just you're from probably not wrong. History. It's just it's interesting to see how this all develops. I'm enjoying watching everything get announced because. Wait, wait, wait! Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yes. The Xbox is going to have an internal battery now. Why would it have a battery? Well, I mean, like an ion battery. They're going. They're you're, you're talking about the controller, the du- right? Double A's. Yeah. No, they're still using double A's, but you can oh, still. Oh, what the fuck! <laughs> That's the dumbest fucking. Why? <laughs> I buy a controller. We've had this conversation before. I'm pretty sure, fucking, but I'm never not near a fucking charging port with my PlayStation. Okay. So I don't understand this problem. Like, why? Just fucking go on. I just assume Microsoft has like, like stock in Duracell or something. Yeah, because yeah, so here's the thing: lithium-ion batteries wear out. Eventually, you get to the point if you play a lot that your PlayStation controller is not going to hold battery for more than say like an hour or something like that. So I've what do you do? Tether it, battery. or do you swap out another lithium-ion battery pack into it? Well, you can't do that. Yeah, That's but you can with an Xbox controller. But I have never had a battery issue with a controller ever. I've okay. had con- or the there are certain, plenty of people that have if you go on Reddit or Twitter or things like that. But yeah. I've ne- I, me personally, I've never had a problem with a battery life. I honestly but. think this is it's overblown. Everyone's like, why would you still support double A controllers or double A batteries? And they said to maintain flexibility for gamers. What does it really hurt you if you decide, okay, I'm going to put a battery pack in there instead? Whoop de freaking do. Yeah, but I mean. I don't have batteries at my house at all. I don't. Okay. I don't keep batteries. It I don't comes know with batteries when you buy it, and you can buy a lithium know, ion pack I'm, if you want. I'm getting to that point, but I mean, I don't have batteries, so I don't. I don't want to have to run out of batteries and like, well, shit, I just can't play. I don't have an option now. Yes, Great. you can play. You just plug it into the Xbox and play. Just oh, like you, you would if your battery was dying on your PlayStation so saying, controller. You yeah. tether it. Yeah, you just okay. tether it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know it's you no big that. deal. I mean, it's not like you can only use a battery pack on an Xbox controller. Well, you see, where, well, you at least see where my argument is. Like, well, I can see it, <laughs> but it's dumb. But just still, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, the, people made that argument when they announced that, and I was like, well, this is dumb because you can still do whatever you want. In fact, they gave you extra choice on what you want to do. Will I use AA batteries in my controller? Probably not. But you know what? I didn't have a battery pack for one of my Bluetooth controllers upstairs. I wanted to stream a game on my phone to try it out. So I paired my Xbox controller up with my phone and put AA batteries in it to run it because I didn't have anything else at the time. Worked mm. just fine for me. Or you, know, you could just have a battery that's right there inside the controller and you never have to worry okay. about. So here's, here's my use case then. Say I want to tether my Xbox controller to my cell phone and that battery's dead. What do I do, Willie? Charge up your damn controller. Is that easy? Okay. Or I go to my drawer and pull out two AA batteries and I have power immediately. Or know that you're going to do that and already have the controller charged up. It's okay, personal responsibility honest, here. Oh, personal responsibility. <laughs> personal let's be responsibility honest. For controller batteries. This how is often have you? Jesus how Christ. often have you picked up your controller, turned on your PlayStation, and it kind of goes uh-huh. and dies? You're like, wow, shit. Was it your? Oh, were you like, times, but were you, you know like personal responsibility? I should have plugged this thing in. Plug it right in. Like, oh. Back in business. Done. 
it, difference being if you were an Xbox user and you knew that it was an option, you would have a drawer full of AA batteries. And it doesn't <laughs> matter because you can just plug it into your console. Well, that's also same extra case. cost. Yeah. It's extra cost to package with a lithium ion battery too, Willie. It cuts both ways. Super superfluous costing. I don't know the word. I, that's Superfluous. the word. I couldn't yeah. pronounce PlayStation that. PlayStation controllers are not cheap. And honestly, oh. I just had to replace yeah. one. The controller that showed up with my PS4 Pro died within three days. Like, dead, dead. I had to just go buy a new one. There was no way to get it to work. I literally took the fucker apart. Dead. Ooh, it was oh, yeah. Dead. I, would say, I would say send that back or something. Get another one. They'll probably refund it. But I, I don't know. Yeah, they would if I sent the whole thing back. And I'm like, I'm not sending back the whole the... fucking PS4 Pro just to get the, repl- the controller replaced. Yeah. So I just bought another controller. Yeah, Amazon wanted me to send the entire thing back. I'm like, fuck you. I'm already downloading games. Controller. No, yeah. they were assholes about it. So I was like, fuck it. I'll yeah, buy so that was controller. a defect. But yeah, it was a defect. Well, you should have gone like, to Sony on that one, though, because the, yeah. the people you their buy the console cost, from don't really. customer service sucked. No, but... I, I tried going through the Sony I'll give one. You and, that. like, I yeah, that's true. I can get them to but take it. But yeah, you... I just bought another one. But like, it does happen where sometimes the controller just dies. And it's just, at that point, there's nothing you can do about it. If it's one of the PlayStation ones, you just toss it. But the and company, you're out 60 bucks. The company that sells you that can't make the choice to be like, okay, just give us the controller and we'll swap that out because they have no way to get that back to Sony then. Yeah. I mean, that, that's where Amazon didn't really have much they could do there. I'm sure they could eventually be like, we'll give you a used one if you want or something like that. But Yeah, um, it, was, it wasn't worth the hassle. I just bought another controller. But like, yeah, it does happen. Sometimes the lithium ion batteries just die. Like, you get a lemon every once in a while. Are you sure that was what the problem was? Was the battery? As far as I could tell, yeah, like it Fair would enough. not take a yeah, charge. Yeah, you know more than I would. <laughs> yeah, so I literally I took the fucker apart to make sure everything in it was connected correctly, and like I checked the actual wiring and all the soldering on it was good. Just yeah, it would not take a charge. Like I said, I've been through some PlayStation Four controllers. I'm not gonna lie, but it's mostly like uh, certain buttons don't work or stick drift. That's been my problem. I've never really had yeah. a problem with battery though. I will say that just in personal experience. And uh, I hadn't up until the one I just bought for the PS4. <laughs> up until then, I'd bought I think four PS4 controllers. I'd never had a problem with any of them. So that it's means... like anything. It's anything that's tech. You're gonna oh, get yeah. a lemon every once in a while. Yeah. So let's roll on over to the last part of this. We'll keep talking PS5 here, but Anthony had some specific stuff to bring up about an upcoming game. Oh yes, because I I was not in a rush to get a PS5, but of course one of my my favorite game studios, Insomniac, is trying to make me uh, buy a PS5 a little earlier than I wanted to, because the motherfuckers are coming out the gate with Ratchet and Clank, was it? it's Rift Apart, so it's a literal Rift jumping, it's it's shattered dimensions with Ratchet and Clank, and then during the preview video they end up showing Clank go through a rift and running into what appears to be a female Ratchet. And so this is like dimension hopping along with the crazy weapons and the you know, shooting aliens and all the fun stuff of Ratchet and Clank. But yeah, it's just it's all of that plus more goodness with dimension hopping. Like it looks gorgeous. It's more insomniac, which I mean, they just they make everything great. Like they're an awesome studio. So yeah, that I'm just hyped about because I've loved all the Ratchet and Clank games. I I think I bought all of them except for the one fighter they did just because it's like eh. But other than that, like all the Ratchet and Clank games have been super fun since the original. I think on PS2, like the the gun system, the flying around in jets, in the the space stuff, in the last one was awesome. It's going to be another fun game. But yeah, there there's an expansion to Ratchet and Clank. We're getting more storyline, more more, and possibly another Lombax. Because as far as we know in the in the story, there were very few Lombaxes. Or at one point, I think Ratchet was the only Lombax left in the universe. And now apparently, there's at least one more. That might be another dimension, but still another one. And then um, they also, of course, did the huge announcement of uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, which instantly um, got people confused due to a statement by some jackass that works for Sony. (laughs) Let's see, what is it? Uh, This is from a Verge article. Uh, Part of the confusion stems from comments from Simon Reuter, EVP head of European business at Sony Interactive Entertainment, who commented in an interview with The Telegraph, I guess you could call it an expansion and an enhancement to the previous game. Reuter went on to explain there's a substantial Miles Morales component, which is the expansion element, but also within the game as well, there's been major enhancements of the game and the game engine, obviously deploying some of the major PlayStation 5 technology and features. And so Insomniac had to come out on their Twitter and say, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales is the next adventure 
in the Miles Spider-Man universe. It is a standalone game. We will reveal more about the standalone game at a future date. So it's not an expansion. It's not adding onto your PS4 Spider-Man game that you already have. It is a brand new game that's going to be a continuation of the storyline. But it's not a fucking expansion. It's not DLC. It's a different game. Focusing on Miles Morales. Yeah. Focusing on Miles. Though, of course, yeah. We still don't know if there'll be any of the actual Spider or the the PS4 Spider Man universe Peter Parker in the game or not. More than sure likely, he'll at least be in it for a character. Yeah. Whether or not he's actually playable, who I don't knows? Because, so. yeah, the I only thing be. they showed was Miles. Well, see, I hope that, that's the one thing I kind of wish they'd gone half and half. Because let's be honest, there's going to be racial backlash. People going, oh, they made Spider Man black. All the people that have never noticed the comics and somehow ducked Spider Verse. Now they're going to complain about the game. Well, I mean, he was say, already in the previous game. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't. He wasn't Spider Man. Well, and at so the very end, if you played that, all that through, that same it, loud up. minority of racists are going to make the same bullshit comments, or we have to hear it all again. And I mean, I understand exactly why they did Miles because fucking Spider Verse went huge, and it's a great fucking character. Like I love Miles Morales. I own every comic he's fucking been in. I just, oh, I kind of wish they'd have done like a a, a mid game. Where the second Spider-Man game was was half Parker and half Miles, because I think it would have been cool if they'd have done a half game where you played as both. Mm. And but I mean, still, you're gonna get Miles where they've shown it in the in the in the cutscenes at least. They showed him using the Venom Strike, where he has a bioelectrical blast. They showed him turn invisible, so you're getting his actual powers from the comic books, which are gonna be awesome. Because yeah, the stealth missions in the first Spider-Man game were great. How are they going to do those with whoa, the character whoa, whoa, that whoa, whoa, literally whoa, 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 turn whoa. invisible? Uh, the Miles Morales one where you're running from uh, um, Rhino and uh, uh, who was the other one? Uh, 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 Scorpion, Scorpion was good. Plus the, 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 the uh, Mary Jane ones? No, no those were not those fun. Were not Did good. I say those were great? Why are you, 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 said, you said these stealth missions I were fun. I said these stealth missions that you played as Spider-Man, hiding from the fucking guys. Okay. I thought you were talking about the all stealth missions. missions, as in like the. I thought no. you were talking about the ones where you were. Those the are the run and hide Mary Jane missions. and and uh, Miles Morales ones. Those that one with Miles Morales was great. Mission. That's different. That's a different thing. That's like the Bruce Banner missions in some of those crappy Hulk <laughs> games. Nobody wants that shit. Oh god, I never even played those Hulk games. <laughs> some of those are awful. But, no, uh, I, like, I know which one you're be, talking about. Not because not, you not, actually have truck. a character that can turn invisible. It's going to be fun to see what Insomniac does with like the missions where you were sneaking into a warehouse and trying to web up 10 guys before they notice you to get an achievement or something. Like right. It's going to be cool to see what they do with that in the new game. But yeah, it, Insomniac had to come out <laughs> right after the fucking whole announcement to announce, though, so it is a standalone game. It is the second in a series of Spider-Man games, but it is going to be basically taking the same game engine and just amping it up for the PS5. So, like, I mean, the web swinging looked exactly like it did on the PS4 version, which is great because the web swinging is fucking fantastic in that game. Like, Ooh, they and I'm actually curious change. about the, the haptic feedback in the controllers with that, too. Ooh, yeah, I wonder how that's going to work for the web swing. And then, yeah, they showed, the, they showed the big difference is that apparently the daylight nighttime cycle is going to be more realistic. And then, wow. as they showed Miles swinging, they showed him swinging through New York while it was snowing. So it's going to be cool to see more environmental effects going on in that world. Because like, can you imagine like icy streets and shit? Like they could do some really cool stuff with that in that game. In a game where like they literally had like dirt and graffiti and garbage in the alleyways. Like this is a world that they already built, and now they're basically just going to add on to it and make a second game with one of the best game engines, honestly, I've ever played in. So well, like, there's no reason to trash it and start over. It's fucking awesome. Just make things. it best. Two things you brought up. Uh... Well, uh, although like the time change in the first game was um, story based, so yeah, you had yeah, to be at a certain part in the yeah. in the uh, the campaign yeah. to actually have until you finish the game, then you can change it on a whim, right? Yeah. Um, and then second, the I'm pretty sure this game is going to use the haptic feedback because any if the oh, history yeah. of PlayStation. Anytime they have a new feature or something, they guarantee to use it. Let's not forget the six axis use in the PS3, which is not good. Not yeah, good. no, not this, good. this one and then, will have, they'll use the motion controller on the controller for part of the Spider Man gameplay. 
the haptic feedback will probably be different for different web swinging versus web shooting. Like, I'll bet you all of that's going to feel different on the controller. And when the PS4 first came out, that touchpad, they a lot of games, they were like, I'm yeah. sure Sony's saying you have to use these. I'm yeah. sure they were saying. Well, let's uh, remember. Now, they learned a lesson from the motion control. Didn't Sony buy Insomniac, basically? So they're a Sony studio now? Are they? I don't know that for sure. I know they were like, they were always like a... It said like Sony a, Studios on Is the right? trailer. Well, because they because they got the rights for the Spider Man character for the game, not Insomniac. Sony has it. Uh, jump to Sony acquisition, twenty nineteen to present. So yeah, Sony actually oh, nice. they did acquire it. All right, I just wasn't sure because yep, I remember they, they are were, they are an internal studio. Yeah, before that they were always like a technically like a second party. I guess would that be the right term, a second party? They're not owned by the studio, but they work like almost exclusively with them, like with the exception yeah, like of uh, directly what was with it, uh, Sunset Overdrive. That was like, isn't that the only time they went out of it? I'm not 100% Sounds on that. Sounds right. Yeah. Cause almost all their stuff has been Sony exclusive. Yeah. Ratchet and Clank for or, forever. Yeah. I don't so, know yeah, what they did before the, that myself. The majority of their, I mean, I believe the majority of their game load is Ratchet and Clank. Like they've done like nine of them. Like that, that game series has been running for a long time. And yeah, I just, I, I I'm so happy to be a Lombax again. I love me some Ratchet and Clank. That game is so those games are so much fun. The only Ratchet and Clank game I did was the one where they redid the first one because it was free for PS Plus, and I, was oh, like, yeah. I had fun with. I, I just Ratchet and Clank's just one of those series of games that just kind of missed me, kind of like Jack and Daxter with um, Sucker Punch. Yes, yeah, so I went back at some point and I bought like Sucker the Punch. the Jack and Daxter trilogy and played through them over like the course of a week. I was like, okay, those were all right. No, no, Jack was that was that Naughty Dog. I think that was Naughty that Dog. Was Naughty yeah, that was Naughty Dog. Dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Sly Cooper. That was a sucker punch. Yeah, I don't know when it was that I picked up the first uh, Ratchet and Clank, but whenever it was, like, I was ready for it, and that game fucking, it hooked, it, it hooked me in. I, I fucking love those characters. I remember the commercials, like the Sheepinator or whatever it's called. Yeah. I remember Oh, that was such a good gun. gun. <laughs> and that's one of the funnest things about that. They have the weirdest fucking weapons in fucking Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> fucking the Dominator, the Sheepinator. He's got. He's always got some type of bazooka, some type of Tesla coil. Like they create such crazy ass fucking weapons in that game. And All right, yeah, there's gonna be more new ones, so I'm excited. More Miles, more Spider Man, more Ratchet and Clank. I, 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 I might have to just save up and get me a fucking PS5 for myself for Christmas. Maybe that'll be my Christmas present. All right, this is gonna be controversial. Something I'm gonna say next. Ooh. You guys. Always say I'm a PlayStation fanboy, and I don't think that's true at all. Here's something: uh, you remember when the the best the best commercials PlayStation has ever put out? The absolute best commercials were for the PS3, the Kevin Butler commercials. They were that great. character; those were so good. And fuck you, Sony, for suing him because he did another. I guess he did another commercial as the character or something. I don't even know if it had the same name. I remember that, and they stopped doing those commercials. I was so angry at that, because those were the best commercials ever. Oh, all the Kevin Butler commercials. Every last single one of them were gold. Prove me wrong. No one's going to fight you on something that's factually accurate. So, well, does that be something a fanboy would say? Probably. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like oh, that so answer. he tried to do them as a Nintendo Wii commercial, and so Sony sued him. That's fucked up. <laughs> was that a Wii commercial? I thought it was uh, for like some other like uh, insurance company or something. The article I'm seeing it says he he abandoned PlayStation for Nintendo Wii. So and then oh, he got sued. Oh. Well, the Wii or the Wii U? <laughs> it just says Wii. I don't know. I thought I was I like the unrelated for the PS9. That was always my favorite. Oh yeah, the PS2 back is like yeah yeah like like uh, play the future now or something like um, yep. yeah that PlayStation 9 commercial was pretty damn sweet yeah it's a fucking orb and like it turns into nanites and goes into your body like that's what i'm waiting for mm -hmm. i'm waiting for my playstation where download. i can just be spider-man <laughs> exactly that'd be oh that's be what cool. vr's head is what we're jumping to it will be there by the playstation 9 fuck if i know who oh, maybe it'd be awesome was there for the ps7 we yeah <laughs> pre-order your nanite download of the ps9 well, we got about uh, 14 years for the PlayStation 7. If, uh, if, you look at the history, wait, wait. if people won't wear a fucking mask out in public, you really think they're going to take a nanite injection to play video games? Well, I mean, people I are looking at Microsoft saying, you want to inject a ch chip in us? What the hell? Oh, and, and speaking of which, thanks, Nikki. I got my new mask yesterday at a Captain Comics. One of the girls that works there actually has started making her own masks. 
and she made a uh, a couple of you know nerd cloth uh, masks. And the one I bought is a TMNT, and she actually puts uh, like pipe cleaners in the cloth so it bends around your nose, so it actually works okay with the glasses. Nice. It was nice. You know what? I'm I, not gonna I got wear me a mask. nerd mask. That. I'm never gonna wear a mask. Fuck that. Most because I don't go anywhere to use a mask for. I was going <laughs> to say, you'd have to leave. You didn't say that. You well, see it coming. Well, what do you do when you go to get your smokes? Well, gas stations. I mean, I mean, I know the chances I'm taking. But I'm, I'm well aware of the risk. And plus, I mean, I, I usually keep my mouth closed and everything. I mean, that's no, not all the, you know, is, you know, but I mean, I take, you know, precautions. I mean, you think I really care if I get it? Yeah, but you could like unknowingly it. give it to someone else and the mask minimizes that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know all the risk involved. I'm sure everyone who doesn't have a mask knows the risk involved. Yeah, I'm or sure if they, they don't, do. or they I'm just sure they do. Thing, uh, which doesn't make sense. Yes, the entire world's lying to you, like my aunt. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> it sounds like that sounds like some flat earthing going on there. <laughs> this is the oh, new flat earth. Oh dear earthing. God! All right, look at the time. We do need to start shutting things down. Before we shut off the podcast, though, we have one last little bit for you guys. It's a segment called What I'm Into. It's our chance to share with you guys who are watching live or listening at a later date just what kind of geeky and or nerdy things we've been getting into so that maybe, just maybe, you might want to go check them out yourselves. I will kick things off with some of the stuff I'm getting into. Uh, Like I mentioned earlier in the show, I've been ripping a bunch of my DVDs and stuff to put in my own Plex server so that I can just stick the DVDs in a storage segment about in the corner of my basement not have to worry about it yes willie go ahead you were inferring that that i was doing that that now this is all making sense this is coming you around about, about. <laughs> you're the one saying i was doing it ripping them to them and doing it illegally it's you that no, was no, doing no. it i was saying i don't mess with it i'm messing yeah. with you so clear point of clarification if i was taking those dvds and then selling them and keeping the ripped copies that would be illegal. You are legally allowed to make an archival copy of a disc you own, is my understanding. So that is what everything is predicated upon with me ripping these discs, uploading them to my Plex server, which is locally in my house, and then being able to watch them on any device I own. That is perfectly what? legal. You don't want people to pay you 30 cents for your DVD copy of <laughs> Boondock right? Saints? Well, some of these DVDs I could sell for bigger money. Like, uh, for instance, Dogma. You'd mentioned that one a couple weeks ago. Kevin Smith saying something about wanting to do it, and they can't because uh, Harvey Weinstein still owns the rights and co- and complexities resulting from that. So, like, I looked because I was curious on the secondary market on Amazon to buy a used copy of Dogma on DVD. It's like 35 bucks right now. Because oh, they're yeah, the not one in print I, anymore. To buy it, but to sell it, no one wants to pay that money for it. To yeah, sell, like, I you got, sell it to like a like you know a company. You know, yeah, the one I got is the the like director's cut bonus edition mm-hmm. of Dogma. Like so it looks like a leather, looks like a leather bible. Same I think YouTube. that fucker cost me like forty bucks. Yeah, I don't even remember what it <laughs> cost when I bought it. I think it was like a normal price for so when I got it. My wife wanted. My wife was sitting upstairs and she likes the movie, so I flipped it on. We watched Dogma yesterday. It was fun. Once it was up in the Plex server. It was easy to go. My TV upscaled it to 4K as best it could. 480p to 4K isn't always the greatest, but it did all right with it. It was fun to watch. And the way I'm ripping it, I still get the 5.1 surround sound and all of the uh, captions and stuff if I wanted them. I did not keep the bonus features, however. (laughs) If I want bonus features, I'll go dig the disc out. Uh, Some other stuff I've been getting into. Still playing... uh, Dragon Quest XI S Definitive Edition or whatever. I didn't play a bunch this week just because I've been busy with watching tv and i wasn't really in the great headspace to play video games other than some games i played friday and saturday night when willie was hosting some jackbox games that was fun uh more news on that coming up too uh so yeah but the rate you're going with dragon quest 11 yeah you'll finish in about like three years probably well my problem is i get distracted and go and grind well hopefully you'll be able to uh you know hopefully by that time you'll have watched the fifth element by that time (laughs) (laughs) i see what you did there uh, some other stuff going on right now. They're doing a big sale of Switch games and stuff for their summer sale. I did see like Monster Hunter Generations was down to 20 bucks, so I'm kind of tempted to pick that one up. I did see like Hotline Miami was down on sale. There was a bunch of games, including first party Nintendo games, that are on sale for upwards surprising. of about 20 bucks off. And like Willie said, it's surprising because you don't often see that. Even uh, the physical copies, it? it could be like years old. Even the old. physical copies are still and on sale. And they never go places. down like below 30. It seems like the physical copies are also on sale like Amazon, Best Buy, Wally World, and stuff like that right now. So if you've been looking for some of these first-party Nintendo games, 
seeing them drop 20 bucks in price does not happen very often so now's probably your chance uh watch some random tv and stuff like that but i guess the biggest thing to call out was the season finale of season two of what we do in the shadows and it was absolutely hilarious i love that show i strongly encourage anyone to go and watch that it is on hulu if you have hulu you can watch both seasons of what we do in the shadows you don't have to have seen the movie that taika waititi and jermaine clement did but this movie this show takes place in that same universe and you might see some characters from the movie show up in the tv show also it's watched, different characters it is different the characters first two episodes oh, okay does it stay like that that level of like kind of like British dryness? It's not really that British and dry that I can recall. But Matthew oh, Barry does get to do a lot. Yeah, he's of stuff not British it. at all. The first two Matt episodes Barry's. just seemed really dry to me. Maybe I just wasn't in the right I don't know. space to watch it because I started. I was like, eh. I think yeah, it's so hilarious. I thought and it weird. was a retelling of the movie. No, it takes place in the same universe as the movie. And I guess spoiler alert if people don't want spoilers for season one. In the finale of season one, the vampires from the movie show up on the TV show. <gasps> I was gonna, yeah, More I thought Jermaine Tyka Clement? showed up. I, yeah. I thought Jermaine Tyka Clement. shows up eventually, yeah. right? They have the Council of Vampires that shows up at the end of season one. And uh, they are some of those. The Daywalker also appears. Blade? Wesley, Wesley Snipes? Snipes is on the Vampiric Council. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you saying Wesley Snipes? Is on there. Wesley the Snipes show. is in the show on the Council of Vampires. He's got taxes to pay, bitch. He needs to work. <laughs> well, he paid his time for that, right? Look, I mean, so, if you do the time, you don't have to pay it, right? So here's no, what you need choice. to consider. You still have to pay. <laughs> if, you, if you've seen someone play a vampire in movie or TV, there is potential they might show up on the Vampiric Council at the end. Jim Carrey? They tried to. Oh, I wow. think they couldn't get him. There, there's but, uh, old school. Yeah, so, once bitten. I fucking so, love that movie. Oh, Paul Rubens. My best friend is... <gasps> oh, Paul Rubens. That's what they need. Pee-wee. Pee-wee's Wait, it... in the season one finale. Paul Rubens is on the Council of Vampires. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, what, I'm going to have to finish watching the first season the, at least I don't just remember for that the actor, the but Council the guy of... who was in My Best Friend's a Vampire. I love that I movie, don't too. Remember. The Council of Vampires is led by a female vampire named Tilda as well. So Tilda Swinton leads the Vamp Tilda Council Swinton. of Vampires. Nice. So she was used, so it is the actress Tilda they, Swinton. They use their, use name? they use their a, the actor and actresses' names, but oh. have them on the Council of Vampires. So Paul Please Rubens is on there Wes. as Paul. And Please then tell me Wesley Snipes goes by just Wes. And he's That'd be hilarious. Hey, oh damn it! That would be so. Hey Wes, That's awesome. The season one finale also has Dave Bautista oh. show up as a vampire as well. He is not on the Council of Vampires. But I read an interview with him where he was talking about he got a call that said, hey, we just finished. We're wrapping up season one. Would you be interested in doing what we do in the shadows? And he's like, I'll do it for free. And his agent got <laughs> mad and said, you can't say you're going to do stuff for free. Was he a vampire? And the, and the Dave said, fuck you. I can do what I want because I'm goddamn Dave Batista." Well, I think it was more of a matter of you don't give yourself negotiate. He, he was laughing about it when he said that. He's yeah. like, I really wanted to do this show. It's like he just <laughs> left Vancouver and then got back on a plane to Vancouver to go and do a guest spot. Right. And what we do in the shadows. Oh man, I vampire. finally watched. I don't know if he ever was a vampire, but I mean, oh. he probably just wanted to do it. But um, uh, well, because I mean, he mu he must have worked with Taika probably at some point during the whole Avengers Endgame thing. I think well, that was part of it. Taika, also, uh, yeah. on the this movie? season and season two of what oh, we do cool. in the shadows, Mark Hamill is on the show as a character named Jim the Vampire. Nice. Um, well, how about, I mean, since we got Batista in there, what about Triple H since he was in Blade 3? They did not yeah. get Triple H. Or Trinity. Uh, not, well, not yet. <laughs> no, I finally watched uh, Hotel Artemis, that one where uh, Jodie Foster's the, like, surgeon running a a, a hotel to, for patched up bad guys, and Dave Batista's the nurse. He's fucking great in that. Like, it's so nice to see how well he does with acting jobs now after those, like, three or four really god awful action films he did right after wrestling like he got a lot of bad scripts and a lot of bad directors that didn't know what to do with him and man since then he has done some amazing acting work it's so good to see because the motherfucker is a great actor like he's really good he just needs a good script and a good director okay so real quick before we before i stop talking what we do in the shadows the uh, cameos for the council of vampires Tilda Swinton, nice. Danny Trejo, Paul Rubens, Evan Rachel oh, Wood, Wesley Snipes, and then the three original vampires from the What We Do in the Shadows movie. They then also reference other members that couldn't be there, named Kiefer, Tom and Brad, 
Rob. Oh. <laughs> Rob? Pattinson. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Twilight. Oh, they shortened his name, but Wesley couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to call Wesley Snipes Wes unless he gives you permission. The Wesley he might Snipes just kick cameo. You in your fucking head. I didn't even you tell you everything I'd about worth that one. It. It's fantastic. Just watch it. It's a great show. I love it. Matthew Barry is absolutely hilarious in it as Laszlo the Vampire. You might know him from the IT crowd, but that's what I've been getting into. Uh, one of you guys. Oh, is that the guy to... with the hair? Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, no, different guy. Sorry. Oh, the white dude. White dude. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, have yeah. To give that another shot. Then yeah, maybe I just wasn't in the right mindset the day I watched it. I mean, I think it might have taken me a couple episodes never. to get hooked. I can't remember. I, mean, I love the movie. I have the movie. Yeah. So you should try. You have Hulu, Willie. So I really encourage that you go and check this one out. I think you would it, like it. I mean, you know what? I use Hulu for mostly. Letter Kenny. You goddamn right. You need to get back <laughs> on that. <laughs> so Willie, what have you been getting into? Uh, some clubhouse, uh, you know, 51 games on the switch. That's really fun. Uh, been playing more dead by daylight. Good news. This coming, this, uh, uh two days, Tuesday. Silent Hills coming out. That's going to be super fun. Can't wait for that. Thank God that probably, um, the pyramid. The, uh, head. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, hopefully the, um, the time to get into a match will probably be a lot shorter, thankfully, because, I'm pretty sure more people want to play Pyramid Head than they do want to do Survivor. So Survivor queues will hopefully be a sh- lot shorter. And um, so I mean, well, I probably will be streaming that Tuesday. Just Ooh. me just being there saying, just playing the game. Uh, let's see. Uh, and like uh, Chris said, been playing some Jackbox games uh, Friday and yesterday. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it again today. Uh what time would you, would you uh, guys like to uh, join in on that? I need time to eat lunch and do a couple chores around the house, but chorn. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Letter Kitty, chores first, bitch. There's I work know. to be done. I know, I know, I know. But so, so, I mean, I didn't ask you what what your old plan is for the day. I said, when will you have time? God. As long as is. As long as you give me an hour or two after we are done this show, I can go anytime. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, what time is uh, so? Um, let's say, uh, Bachman, do you have any particular time that you uh, can or can't do it? No, I'll, I'll eat and then Are I'll you try interested? to hop off for a bit. I mean, yeah, my hand's killing me, but I'll see if I can play for a while. Yeah, got in both my hands, my middle knuckle yeah. here and my pinky in this one. I don't know what I did because I literally like I haven't punched anything. And I feel like I fucking put my arm through like a brick again, like and like I messed it up, like uh, back when I knuckle. did martial arts. Like it feels like a like I tried to break something and hit it wrong like every time i grip something like the tendon in like the middle of my hand is just screaming at me and like i didn't like i went over and like i played with my buddy's kid on his birthday but like i didn't do anything i didn't hurt myself i didn't fucking land on it like i don't know like unless i like rolled over on my hand in the middle of the night crushed it and then just slept on it anyways i don't know what the fuck i did but it hurts like hell yeah i can't even bend my fingers all the way down to close a fist that's problematic Eesh. Yeah, it's just fluid. The the uric acid just built up into He's got the joint. Fluid. And stuff. All I can think is that rap from Scrubs now, where they start rapping about fluid. I don't remember fluid. that. I just he remember got, how Brendan Fraser's dead in it. Oh, you got that fluid. That was I sad love again, Brendan really. Fraser. I'm, I love Brendan Fraser. Don't worry, he's back as a robot. I need to watch that. Coming, now that I got HBO. Coming Max. HBO Max. It's on <laughs> HBO Max. Yes, watch it. I bought. So, so, so when is that going to leave HBO Max and go back to the DC Universe Online it's app when not, they lose everything it's else? It's not because they wanted to promote it better, so they put it on both services. And I think that they're taking money out of the HBO Max subscription fees well to pay for the next worth, season. It is well worth the watch. Uh, I, I, I'm happy I bought it on Blu-ray. Yeah, I watched the pilot. Yeah, the Very pilot good. was good. And. My only question is, it seems like they, they were also in the Teen Titans show, but like for an episode, but it's not, it's not even the same Doom Patrol. It's not even the same Doom Patrol. It's like a whole, the same characters, the same actors and everything. It's just a completely different story than what happened in Teen Titans. So mm-hmm. fucking weird because Beast Boy was living with them or something. I only saw a little bit of it, so I didn't, because I never saw Teen Titans. I wanted to. That's on no HBO Max to- also. Well, I don't have HBO goddamn Max, now do I? Well, you better get I have no way some. to watch it. Because they have a no free ba- trial. Is, is it on the PS4? Is there, yes. Is there an app? I believe so. 
Yeah, I believe the HBO Max. Yeah, there is an app on the PS4. Because you know what? There was never was an app on the PS4 for the DC. No oh yeah, the DC Universe service. Online. Yeah. Yeah, I just so, pulled it up right now on my web browser right here. It's HBO Max available for PS4. Yeah. All right then. I might have to then to do a free trial. It is a fifty-eight point six five megabyte file. I didn't need to know that. I'm I just letting no you know everything no you cares. need to know. Chris, shut the fuck up. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that old joke. Yep. Get can't you come up with bird. a new one? If Why I do I need? Give you, if I could flip you the bird, but I can't even close my hand properly right now. Oh, but whoa. Willie, I think you're just stupid. Not yep. right. Uh, did you hear that royalty check get mailed? <laughs> <laughs> royalty check. That means we'd have to make money. This podcast costs me money. <laughs> I just show up, and here I am. Um. What else am I going to say? So, okay, let's say around. Um, uh, how's four o'clock today, this afternoon? Uh, my time, Eastern time. Yeah, sure. So that'd be okay. two o'clock yeah. your time, Bachman. Uh, yeah. That'd be like uh, that'd be four a.m. for you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you. All right, um, yeah, so four p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, go watch South Porky on Twitch and we'll join in on the uh, on the Jackbox games. And uh, if and if you want to. Uh, you can join in on the uh, conversation too. If you have a PlayStation Four, you can jump in on the um, the chat on the party chat. I'll make it as public. If you want to friend me, my name is Willie D Nelson, all one word. Willie D Nelson. Uh, yeah, Willie D Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, send me a friend request, and but uh, make sure you put a message. Let me know that you're adding me from this because I get some friend requests. I have no idea who they are. I ask him like I don't know like. Well, why'd you send me the friend request then? <laughs> you don't know how you know me, but you just uh, accept uh, everybody, my... Willie. Just be accepting. No, I got. A, oh no, there's. Oh, I got a story for the after show for <laughs> to tell you. Yeah, there's some <laughs> dude who wanted me. I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Yeah, some people I don't ask. Yeah, they're uh, they're a little annoying, but I mean, most people that you play Dead by Daylight, like, oh, those third one. I'm like, Meh. anyway. Uh, other than that, I can't think of anything. Oh, we, I don't know if I mentioned this last time. I did watch John Wick 3, Chapter 3. Did you yeah. like it? No, you complained about it, it last was, week. It was all right. Oh, I did talk about it last week. Yeah, it was all right. That's, that's I'm a huge right. fan of Mark yeah. Tacosco, so I loved it. Because seeing John Wick versus Mark Tacosco was fucking awesome. Which one's that one? That was uh, the bald guy that they sent to kill him. Oh, God. Bald. The last guy he fights in hand-to-hand combat. Trying to remember. Wow, you really didn't pay much attention to that movie if you don't recognize the villain in the film. No, no, the movie is just like it's just <laughs> washed over my head. I remember Lawrence Fishburne <laughs> being crazy as fuck. I remember that that chick that was always like, mm, "Well, I don't like this." And the uh, the uh, was it the uh, the 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 Academy won't like it. wherever they say the 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 faction whatever they want the coalition won't like this whatever I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, my memory is just. It was a forgettable movie. It was. It didn't have the staying power of the first one. The first one is the best in the series. Well, no, in the third one, they don't kill the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you have a more emotional um, weight to the uh, first movie. There you go. So you just agreed with me. Thank you. Um, uh, I know I watched something else. Uh, must not be anything worth remembering. Watch me remember in the thing. Like, no, wait a second. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, I'm not playing Dead by Daylight. I've been playing um, another fantastic game. Or should I save this for next time for uh, games that should be known? But I'll mention it now. Pixel Junk Shooter. Awesome, fun game. Super fun. All, a lot of those Pixel Junk games are a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of different genres. Uh, and I'm just going to shut the hell up. Bachman, you go next. <laughs> uh, Drafts from the chat from the guy. It's called, it was the high table. Or the people that sent the yeah, the uppity bitch. Oh, look at me. I'm a little baby in my high chair sitting at the high table. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's the best I got. Weirdo. I know. Uh, I actually got some reading done this week. I'm like, let's see. Where am I at now? 50, 56 pages into. I finally started reading uh, the copy of Altered Carbon I picked up. It's funny. I'm enjoying the book, but I think this is the first time that I've really... As I'm reading a book, I'm remembering the scenes from the first season of the show. It's like, wow, they actually did that better than the script on the show. <laughs> so, like, it's a good book, and, like, all the original ideas came from here. But, like, the opening sequence where Kovach gets killed, like, it actually works better in the show than it does in the book. In the book, it's not bad. Like, it's good. 
but then the, you watch the opening scene in the show and like, oh no, that death was great. Like it's like they took everything in here that was like a like a B plus and they made it into an A on the show. So yeah, it just it's it's just making me once I'm done reading this, I'm gonna go rewatch the first season again because it's just it's a fucking good show. And then um, I've been uh, dealing with a bunch of bullshit, but eventually, uh, yes, oh yesterday, no Friday morning, uh, unemployment finally fucking paid me. So I got like four weeks worth of unemployment all at the same time. So I was actually able to go and pick up my goddamn comic books. I actually have three comic books to read. <laughs> so I'm very happy I was able to go pick up my comics. Um, yes, yeah, so I got those. But yeah, I cut down my list big time when I lost my job. But at least I have a couple now. And then uh, they did have an update. Well, you'll love this because, of course, I had to get another Funko Pop. They finally did the Legend of Korra. So I have my Korra Pop to go along with my Aang Pop from Airbender, which everybody's been loving this stuff now that um, uh, Last Airbender is on Netflix. A whole bunch of people are watching it. And I got a bunch of friends lined up now to borrow the Blu-ray of Korra because for some odd reason, the Korra show is not on Netflix yet, which it's weird that they did one but not the other. But either way, yeah, both great shows. So I picked up the Korra one. It's awesome. And then I, I watched a movie, too. Now I can't remember what it was that I watched. I rented something. Oh, I watched uh, it was the Just Mercy one with uh, Michael B. Jordan and uh, Jamie Foxx. They good. had it. They had it uh, for available on YouTube uh, where you had to rent it, but it, the rental cost was free, so you could just watch it for free. Um, yeah, it was a really good movie. It's all about uh, a lawyer that uh, went down to Alabama to try to fight for people on death row, uh, proving people that had been basically convicted with no evidence and were facing the death penalty for crimes they didn't commit. And it showed you know, like the and it's one of those awesome movies where you know you get a really good story, and at the end they show you like the update of the actual people who lived through these events and like what they actually looked like and what they did afterwards. And yeah, it's just like it's uh, I think it's part of the Southern Poverty Group now, the group that actually uh, works to get people off death row and proves you know that there's people in jail that are innocent of crimes they were convicted of you know decades before. And yeah, like the story of the of the one that they do in the movie is just fucking terrifying. That basically, with no evidence, this guy got put on death row for nothing. Like, just because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and cops just basically grabbed him and tossed him in jail. Like, it's fucking terrifying. But yeah, really good flick. And then, yeah, I keep wanting to watch uh, uh, The Hunt, but I haven't heard enough good or bad about it for anybody to actually know that watches a lot of movies. I don't, have You guys You guys haven't seen it yet either, have no, you? No, I haven't. Yeah, see, and I don't know if I want to risk, like, because it's like nine or ten bucks to rent the fucking thing. It's like, eh. I don't know. But yeah, other than that, yeah, like, I said, my hands have been killing me, so I haven't been playing much of anything. Like, I haven't, I've been falling behind on Apex. I'm behind on fucking Dead by Daylight. I'm behind on all the battle passes I paid for. It's like, fuck. And at this point, honestly, I don't want to play them. Like, I'm just sick of everything. I've been playing No Man's Sky. Like, What's your tier level on? It's still, like, fucking 29 or 30. I went at 59. I only got yeah. less than 11... Uh, to go, yeah. Two there's go there's no way I'll finish it in time. And honestly, oh, this finish. time it's not that bad. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's only what like 20 days left. Like unless I actually start playing, like I'm not gonna finish in time. So I mean, I'm sure know. Silent Hill comes. In. Eh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, also, I'm not a huge fan of Silent Hill, so I don't really care about Pyramid Head. I mean, it looks like an okay killer, but eh, I mean, it's we'll, power. We'll it's powers in it. Is, you know, that's what's fun. Yeah. Interesting. The powers look. Yeah. The powers are kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll probably be playing some of that this week. But yeah, I've just been playing a bunch of No Man's Sky with a bunch of the updates they did. And just there's been so many cool updates to that game that it's just, it's fun. Everything that, like the story mode, all the different quests and stuff, just, you know, going around and hunting hunting for stuff in the universe. And it's nice because at uh, No Man's Sky, you don't really need to listen to the sound effects of like the ships and the laser beams and stuff. So I just put my speaker next to me and I listen to podcasts and it's just, it's nice and relaxing. Yeah, so getting some reading done. I'll be getting some more reading done. And I finally got me a copy of uh, Ready Player One. I've been wanting to read that book for a long time. I finally got a copy of that. I rewatched that movie twice last week. Just because it's just such a fun movie for fucking Easter eggs. There's so many goddamn characters in that movie. Like, it's I, it's honestly, like, I thought it was such a, like, kind of a dumb idea when I heard it was coming out. And I've rewatched it multiple times because I own, like, a digital copy on Vudu. And yeah, I think it's one of my favorite Steven Spielberg films. Like, I just love that movie. It's so just heartwarming. And it's got Simon Pegg. I love Simon Pegg. That's fair. It's got awful Cyclops in it, but it also has Simon Pegg. So it makes up for awful Cyclops. But yep, that's what I'm getting into. Cyclops? Yeah, the kid that played Cyclops in the last two movies that nobody noticed is the main kid in Ready Player One. That's him? I didn't yeah. know that was Cyclops. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that tells you how how great his Cyclops was. Nobody fucking knew it was him. That's because <laughs> nobody ever lets Cyclops yeah. do anything in the movies. Well, uh, no, it's true. also he had zero chemistry with the chick playing fucking Jean Grey. Well, let's be honest. Most of the cast in that movie had zero chemistry with each other outside of true. Fassbender, uh, well, um, what's, Brain Fart. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the dude from American Horror Story and um, Kick-Ass. I can't remember uh, Evan, his name. Evan Peters. Evan Peters. Yeah. Yep. Evan Peters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was good. There was a lot of casting that sucked in that movie, but that's neither here nor there. I think we are about to shut this stream down, though. But before we shut it down, a friendly reminder, we stream live every Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, do? over at geeks.live. That is the official streaming home of the Gunna Geek Network. It's also a URL. So is nerds.live, which is our backup URL you can use to find us. We also stream out on Twitch, Mixer, a variety of different sources, and condense the chat room all into one. So we are out there. You can find us. We like to stream a bunch of stuff. And... Uh, yeah. So, any final thoughts, guys, before we shut this thing down? Uh, stay tuned for the after show for uh, a Willie story. A Willie story. And don't forget uh, twitch.tv slash South Porky at 4 p.m. Eastern time. There we go. For some gaming Both shenanigans. Are, yeah, it should be. Both those things sound dirty. <laughs> so? I said good or bad. I said they sound dirty. <laughs> that being said, we are going to shut this thing down. We do strongly encourage you to hang around for a few minutes of post show. As we get a new Willie Nelson story. It should be fun and inappropriate. It's what yeah. you subscribe to. Exactly. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this brand new episode of the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. Don't forget, we'll be back next Sunday live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, over at live.atgnpodcast.com, channel 3 of the Alpha Geek radio app, and over at our network home at gunnageek.com slash live. If you have any feedback for the show, please contact us at atgnpodcast at gunnageek.com on our hotline number at 304-806-ATGN, or even better, go to Twitter and send us a message at atgnpodcast. The music you've heard in this show is produced by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. 